Hello and welcome back to Cryptocurrency Trading Masterclass by Wealthy Education. In this video, we'll talk about how to trade based upon support and resistance levels. So the first thing that I would bring up is that the platform I am using is called TradingView. And it is freely available at TradingView.com. It's a favorite of traders around the world. Uh, you have the ability to trade a whole plethora of instruments, depending on which broker you have it attached to. And if for no other reason, people use it for analysis just because the analysis is so good. And then they execute the trades on whatever platform they are using through their brokerage. So in front of you, I have the platform itself. You can see I have a line chart of Bitcoin uh, US Tether, USDT, four hour. So that means uh, every bar or every candlestick is what happens over the course of four hours. The line, it plots the close every time, uh, you know, at the end of four hours, it might be there or it might be there, it might be there, up there, etc. So support and resistance is the first thing you're going to need to be able to identify um, if you are going to use the, any type of technical system. Support and resistance is the basis of pretty much everything that you do. So support is exactly what it sounds like. It's where the market is supported. So, for example, at a specific price. Here on Bitcoin, you can see 30,000. You know, if I see the market test this area, but continue to find buyers and, and not be able to break through it, that is considered to be support. And as I'm sure you can guess, resistance is the exact opposite. So it tries to break through and it can't, and that becomes resistance. Now, what causes this is a lot of volume, a lot of buy orders in this area, or in this case, sell orders. So much that the buyers can't overcome the selling orders, or the sellers can't overcome the buying orders. Every time they push it down, the buyers come back to pick it up. The um, platform has a whole host of tools on these submenus here, but on this one, Trend line tools, you'll see horizontal line. You click on that and you just place it on the chart wherever you want. You can see there's a little bubble there in the middle. You can click and drag that and you can adjust it to where you want it to be. And just plop it on the chart like that. You can right click, go down to settings. You can change the colors, the thickness, uh, or the type of um, line. You can add text to it. You can change the price. And then the vi uh, visibility just means that if you want to show it, like, say, only on the daily charts, but not on the monthly charts, then you can click or unclick that. So pretty straightforward stuff. So what you're looking for, uh, for support and resistance, the first thing that I would say is... If you, let me go ahead and remove this. So let's go to the daily time frame. So if you look at a chart, you can see that there are a couple of areas where buyers or sellers seem to be very active. So for example, right here, you can see that, um, you can see that uh, buyers came in and picked up the market. It, it tried to fall, it rallied, it tried to fall, it rallied, tried to fall, it tried to fall, etc. So when I go to settings and I go to coordinates, if I put in 30,000, this gives you a good baseline for an area where the buyers may be uh, particularly aggressive. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important because you will find that um, the market remembers these areas for support and resistance, meaning that like when we get back there, the buyers came back in. Obviously, there's a lot of trading volume interested in the 3,000 level. So 
let's go ahead and change over to um, something else. Let's make it Litecoin. Tether. And you can see it's a little bit more of an active chart. And this sets up right here. This is resistance. You can see that we tried to get above it. But I want you to notice something. And I'll go ahead and set the coordinates to 95. Gives you a nice baseline. I want you to notice something that we tried to break above there a couple of times. Obviously, there was selling pressure there. But notice how once we finally did break out, when we came back, there was support. There is um, a saying that was once was support becomes resistance and vice versa. I want you to think of it like this. Think of a high rise. And then think of all of the floors. And how they are constructed. So if you take the stairs. On each of these floors. If you're on the first floor and you take the stairs to the second floor. This ceiling, which was resistance, becomes support now. Do it again. The ceiling, which was resistance, now becomes support. If you drop down, well, your support had been here at the um, floor of three is now the ceiling of two. It really works like that, and I'll show you. Just take a look at... these lines as I lay them out. Okay, so you can plainly see that This was resistance. It was resistance a couple of times. And then it broke through. Became support. This became resistance. Broke through. Became support. This resisted a couple of times on this candlestick. We finally broke through. Found support here. Broke out to the upside. It did have a little bit of reaction there initially. But then we pulled back to find support. We rallied to find resistance, support, and now it's acting like it may roll over and offer resistance. These are not um, these are not accidents. These happen for a reason. These happen because these places are where all of the uh, larger order flow is, and it is crucial to trade um, at these levels instead of trying to uh, basically just trade wherever. And the main reason for that is that you want help along the way. You don't move the market. So, for example... You can see that there's a little bit of support here right around, you know, 227. So I'd say probably two, we could call that two and a quarter. In Tezos. So notice something. We come down there, the buyers come in. We come down there, the buyers come in. We come down there, the buyers come in, and we bounce just a bit. Notice how the sellers came in there. We did break through it, but the sellers came in there, there. Buyers come in there. Sellers come in that area. So it increases the odds that you are trading with the market itself. And by doing so, you increase your odds because you have uh, other people in the marketplace moving right along with you. So if you take a, a, a trade here, if you decide, hey, we're rallying right here is where I want to take a trade. Notice how you have to go all the way down here to find the buyers before seeing the market turn back in your favor. When you could have just simply waited for a reaction to the same level again. 
you know, that way you don't have to put up with the losses. It doesn't mean that it works 100% of the time. Clearly, it does not. But it works most of the time. You need to think of it in the sense of where the big money is trading. Bigger players than you are trading at these levels. Furthermore, you also need to keep in mind that it is not to the exact penny. So $2.25, it doesn't mean that if it hits $2.24, it's broken through support and it's going to just fall apart. You know, you use this as a guidepost. You look for technical confirmation. Some of the things that um, we will be talking about in this course and then try to find them uh, happening at these levels. So, for example, one way to think of uh, support and resistance is like uh, a, a shooting range, an outdoor shooting range. An outdoor shooting range typically has um, an earthen mound. And why does it have an earthen mound? Because if it is like a piece of metal, or even concrete, you might get a ricochet. Well, that's not how this works. It can work like that occasionally. But they will use a target, and then they will use the earthen mound, and depending on the caliber of the gun and a whole host of other factors, it may barely penetrate. It may penetrate pretty deeply. So think of it more as a range. You need to see whether or not it breaks through to the other side in order to consider this flipped your support being flipped to resistance for example um and really the best way to do that is to wait for the candle or the bar uh to close and we will go through using those as well so for example um you know we on this daily chart and tezos broke above you know what i would consider to be the 320 level on this candlestick and we pulled back and notice how uh, it looks like we are trying to find buyers here again. You know, that's what you're you're looking to see. And of course, there are multiple ways to go about this. It's almost infinite. Um, but this is going to be the baseline for how you trade. You know, you also would be better served to pay attention to longer term. You know, I mean, you you can look at a five minute chart and try to find support and resistance areas. Um, but they, they don't mean as much as they would on like a weekly chart. And that makes sense because it takes a lot more time to make weekly trades appear on a chart as far as re reactions than it does a five minute chart. This can just be simple noise. Doesn't mean it can't be done, but you have to respect the fact that it's not as relevant. A lot of times when you take a trade, uh, you know, on a breakout, and then you see that as resistance and you pull back and you see it as resistance again. Well, if you take this trade here, a lot of times that's your target. Or if you take this trade here, when it pulls back, then your stop loss is halfway between the two and your target's up here. Or you can also do a type of trading where you recognize this as resistance. So once you break through this, you know, wherever your stop loss is to protect your, your account, and once you break through this, then you lock in some profit. So you're through here. And then if you break through here, maybe you lock in a little bit more. And then once you break through here, you lock in a little bit more. And then finally, the market comes back and takes you out. But it's a way of letting the market tell you when it's time to get out of the trade. Again, multiple, just unlimited ways you can use support and resistance. But you need to know where the market's going to go, or in this case, where it's probably not going to go you know it's probably not going to break down in this region here and it didn't it went higher knowing where it's not going can be just as valuable as knowing where it probably wants to go so in the next video um, i'll show you some examples on how to use this uh, support and resistance concept to make profits